Hello everyone and welcome to episode 182nd of Korea Podcast. Our today's guest is Ms. Yi Ting Zheng. She's a concept artist at Soccer Punch Studio and yes, the same Soccer Punch Studio who worked on IPs like Infamous, Ghost of Tsushima and well, we, we're going to talk more about it in the podcast as well. And we're, we're having this conversation from Seattle as well. Like, she's from Seattle. I'm not from Seattle. You get the point. All right, let's move on to the conversation. But before we do that, let me quickly mention that in the caption section of the podcast, you can check in the four contact section, literally at the top, her Instagram ID. So if you're in YouTube or CastBox or in Spotify, you can use find her ID there. The link to her art station, which, can, which you can see more of her in-depth works as well there too. And her Twitter link. So you can you know, follow her on Twitter if you want to see you know, just go follow her on Twitter. I don't know what else to say. Like, just come this like, right? So yeah, that's about it. Let's move on to the first signature question of the podcast, which I ask everyone basically, which is give us a little introduction on how we got into the world of visual arts and design. Basically, um, tell us, tell me the story of like, you know, of the moment that you realized that you want to become an artist, you know? Cool. Um, by the way, thanks for an awesome intro. And on, okay, another thing I'm like gonna mention really quick. So your video is getting like super blurry right after we start. I, that oh. doesn't matter. It just like suddenly, right. just like I mean, so got so pixelated. Oh yeah, I think it should be fine. No worries at all. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so um, I think I got like a shorter version, and it's like a medium median length version. Um. Maybe I can do like shorter version, I guess. You can do the full version as well. Like, there's no time. <laughs> like, do five the full hour version. long version, huh? Honestly, I'm down. I'll, I'll turn it to Okay, I'm just kidding. Um, okay, um, so how do I start it? Okay, so uh, everything's like I remember things. Um, I was like, just always, you know, just always like drawing, you know, like those janky comic like characters um, since I guess like elementary school from like second grade or something like that. And I was always like this. Um, I guess pretty like creative kids with you know a ton of weird ideas in my mind always. So um, my favorite thing to do back in you know elementary school was to do those like pretty uh, weird comic books, and then like the the fun part for me was to you know add like interactive elements, which is I'll like do like options at the end of each chapter. So I'll do like multiple like. I guess like options, like different routes you can choose. So like, for example, like route A, she will go to the temple and route B, like she'll go to like, you know, like the other, another country or things like that. And I'll just like send to my friend and let them choose. So their option will have like some kind of impact on the fate of the character. So that's, that's my jam back in elementary school. And then I guess that's what that was like my initial um, spark for art. So that's like my biggest passion in elementary school. And then I think that carried through um, during high school and um, college. So um, another thing I remember is there's a one game that completely just like blew me blew me away and had like a pretty big I guess impact on my early artistic taste and that game is actually um pretty early rpg like jrpg game from like a japan um rpg game studio um it's called like z w e i it's the name is pretty um pretty weird but it's super awesome so i was blown away by the the first that wasn't the first time i was blown away by a video game um because like the the world building you know the aesthetic of like all the architectures, you know, floaty, like floating continent and, uh, you know, abandoned ruins, everything. I was just like, whoa, I've never seen something like that before. So after that, I just, that just converted me into like a, like super passionate gamer. So after that, I just like just playing game like 24 seven, basically. And so um, and then I went to our high school, um, and then our college, but, um, that was college back in China. That was my first college and our center actually was my second bachelor degree. Um, so during the, um, my first college year, um, so I got into a major called a uh, game design. So I think that's not really concept art. They don't actually focus on, 
um, making, I guess, conceptual art or anything. They focused more on, I guess, like solving um, problem in like actual game making, because like the, the the main focus of the curriculum was to make, you know, like. 2D indie platform games on your own or with a team. That's basically our curriculum for the four years. That sounds pretty interesting, but I don't think I learned that much to be honest. Um, but that was really fun, actually. So I I got to make like a couple of like indie games on my own, and then I got you know some awards. Um, but yeah, so um, so I guess um, not. Per- like not che- um, I actually got to know concept art was like um, towards end of college, so I just like came across there's a school called FZD. I was like, oh, that's pretty interesting. I checked out their curriculum. You know, they cover everything from character design, environment, props, you know, vehicle, everything. I was like, wow, that's exactly what I wanted to do. Because back then, Odell. Um, I had I, I think my f- like fundamentals you know our fundamentals was okay but what I really wanted to do is actually mm, I guess create stuff from scratch and just like you know um, really just like utilize your um, artistic um, I guess vision and just like put my you know um, my vision on paper or things like that so. Um, Back then, FZD was was my goal for a period of time, and um, when I was cramming for their, you know, they have a actually have an English test because uh, English is not my first language, so I have to, you know, get a get past the test. So when I was cramming for um, their their test, and then I I just like randomly. Um, so like our center actually just like randomly popped into my research. I was like, whoa, there's another school. And it actually has four year program rather than a year compared to FZD. So um, I was like immediately convinced after check their, um, check out their curriculum, you know, they covered even like wider range of things. So uh, I remember um, I saw like, so first term, they do um, human anatomy, creature anatomy, and just like how things work, you know, those pretty cool things. That's That was exactly what I wanted to do. So I guess my goal just directly switched to like ACCD. And uh, but so there's another thing happened before um, uh, like our, our center it was um, I got um, so before I graduated from my um, the college back in China, I actually got an offer from probably one of the most famous tech company. It's also like a game company, like a pretty famous game company in China. And I got their offer. So, and my family was like, yay, you should go. I was like, okay, I'll just give it a shot, even though that wasn't something I really, you know, passionate about because, um, you know, I'm. I wasn't like a fan of their any of their games. You know, so I just, you know, I thought, like, okay, that's probably could be like a good opportunity. So I just, I just went there right after graduate. So I just put our center on hold for, you know, around that time. So, um, sorry, what was the question? <laughs> Okay, so how I got into visual art. Okay, I, I mean, I'm on the wrong right path. So okay, um, actually that job taught me. If there's one thing, like one takeaway, um, I'll say it's like, like working on something you don't enjoy is such a torture. So I feel like I was like a complete just like a zombie and just like empty shell just you know working on that job. Um, that that's not even really concept art. I, I was just like you know, model everything they want, they wanted me to model, basically just, you know, just do like the basic labor work, not you can't even, they don't, they, they didn't even need your like artistic vision, artistic taste, none of that. Basically, they just want someone that can get a job done and just like, you know, turning to what, exactly what they want. So um, I quit the job really quick after maybe just like a year. And then that's, 
how I just like, and also my family was super supportive of my decision. So um, that made my, um, made my, you know, like quitting a job because that was kind of a big thing for my family. But because how supportive my mom was. And um, so I made that decision and just like um, took, I guess, like a three month to um, get my portfolio ready. And then I just um, applied for our center and then I got in. So yeah, so I guess four years later, here I am. <laughs> That's um, how I officially got into the industry because I think previ- like previous to our center, the, the stuff I was studying and the stuff I was doing, not really concept art. It's just like, you know, drawing random characters nothing really to you know problems like actual problem solving or you know you didn't consider any of those like functionality practicality none of those just like you know pure just like fun drawing so um i guess my for my, my formal education um formal counts of our education like started um from our center so yeah that's pretty much the super long version <laughs> sorry about that yeah, it wasn't that long actually. It was just 10 minutes. I mean, I had longer answers, trust me. Okay. And yeah, by the way, I, I love long answers when people get like, you know, total vision in their answers and they just say everything. It's really nice to hear. And um, the thing is, so about like FZD, wasn't the institute, if I'm not mistaken, that, that was like, you know, created and founded by Feng Zhu? Feng Zhu, yeah. yeah. He's the founder. And wasn't it in Singapore, I think? It's in Singapore. And I think it was just one year if I remember that correctly. So yes. that sounds really just like um, super intense, right? You got to learn like all those like like this, this and that in like a year. And then they put like uh, like immense pressure on you to, you know, figure out what you're going to do after the school or some, something like that. So I thought based on that, like, like you know, four years at our center, I, can, I could probably figure out what I actually want to do. So... Yeah, that's my that's my decision. So instead of FZD, you went to Arts Art Center, as you said, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Actually, here's the thing. Fun enough, um, like last year around this time, I actually checked. You know, while we were answering, like it, I uh, recorded an episode on July seventeenth of last year. This is this is not July seventh, <laughs> of course, kind of a coincidence. But mm-hmm. I for episode seventy six, I had Clive Almeida, and he's an Indian artist, and he actually went to FZD and he finished the mm, whole course cool. and he explained in that episode that uh shout out to clive by the way mm-hmm. and um how intense it is like you know it's pretty intensive but the thing is it's an intensive you can put your faith on because they've got hundreds and thousands of results out of his students like <laughs> i they can imagine the industry like you know they i love coaches and like trainers who put you through hell but it's mm-hmm. a const- like it's a constructive hell, you know, mm-hmm. and it's kind of like that as well in FCD in a sense. Like, of course, I'm exaggerating. It's not hell, of course. It's more intense than your like usual normal art classes. Chill college, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I've yeah. heard basically just like pulling all nighter, basically six like five days, six days per week, which is wow. It's really chugging Red Bulls and energy hats off. <laughs> I know. Hats off to them. That's that's super cool. Not, I mean, yeah. not cool, but just like hats off yeah having an unhealthy lifestyle that we're not saying is cool but yeah that we're saying the dedication is cool yeah that's what yeah she was trying to exactly say. yeah don't take us out of context please oh my god <laughs> i just cut uh, that part out <laughs> yeah oh my god yeeting jang is adv- advocating for like pulling all nighters and just drinking caffeine and yeah <laughs> The, the things are lining up. You actually had your third cup of coffee actually before we started. I know. Yeah, I actually only slept for like four hours. So I'm just like my brain is re- isn't really functioning right now. So I might say some weird things. So bear with no, me. No, no, no. I was just joking. Like, by the way, like, don't get me wrong. I had my second cup of coffee in the last like five hours. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm on the same boat as you. Our center, I'll say like the intensity in our center definitely is, you know, is not not something like walking, you know, in a park or anything. It's still super intense. But I think if you manage your time well, you you can probably get around with just like no all nighter. That's like ideal situation. But you know, pretty much everyone sucked at time management, like especially in the first first term. So that's definitely something we went through. 
Yeah. And um, all right, here's an interesting question. Um, so in the introduction, <laughs> I mentioned that you're a concept artist. I mean, of course, like the. And, uh, but now I want to ask you this, like, you know, we talked about, you know, how we got your, you know, come ups in the, how we became a visual artist and all that stuff and got into the whole thing. But now I want to ask you this, what is your main branch of design that you're focusing on right now? And tell us about your experience from the start of it until now. I mean, of course I said concept art, but concept art in what? Like, are you a generalist? Are you sure. an environment? Are you a character? Are you an asset? And also tell us about your whole journey working as a concept artist. Like, what is the journey mm-hmm. of that look like for you? Okay, I guess I'll say um, I'm a generalist because um, um, after, you know, after I went through like on curriculum um, at our center, it's kind of designed to um, make you somehow like a generalist because you, you, you basically you get to learn everything, you know, from creature, character, environment, props, like, you know, basically everything. So I guess it's a, also it a good chance for us to figure out what exactly you're good at or you're interested in. So um, for me, I guess I was interested in everything, literally. I was like, so so character um, has always been my forte, I guess. But um, when I was introduced to environment, I was like, damn, immediately got hooked on that. I was like, wow, that's so cool. And actually, I think um, when I was learning environment, my character are also got like leveled up so quickly because I think they're, you know, there's some aspect they're kind of like interconnected. If you learn like if you have like really good grasp on uh, lighting, your character's render is going to, you know, get better. So I think that's re- really interesting. And um, um, so I also do a, a little bit of like props, maybe just 5%. And I only have one piece like in my portfolio, but I'll say um, I'm a general generalist. Um, sorry, what was in the second part of the question? Oh, um, what's what's the, like the my process journey like? journey has been, no, no, how the whole journey has been for you. Like, you know, what was the first time you were hired as a concept artist? Like, you know, where you started as a freelancer? Like, basically, how has your, you know, professional journey as a concept artist been? Gotcha. So, um, uh, my first uh, internship was um, um, back in China. It was like uh, a tech company, like mobile game. And then I was doing basically just like 3D work. And then I guess... Um, after that, um, my first actual, I guess, like actual um, job or internship that's related to, uh, directly related to Kazbar was um, uh, NetEase North America Studio. So I was doing basically, um, I was hired as a generalist. Um, I was, so I was doing basically everything, um, character, environment, everything. And then... So, and then after that, um, I also um, worked on Halo Infinite. Also, I was working on some other things, you know, basically everything, just, you know, from, um, I guess, like, um, architecture design to, you know, just, like, some some basic, like, floor pattern design to some character armor. So, I guess um, being a generalist sometimes can... Mm, just get you like more I guess like more like wider range of tasks I think that's really um something that I I prefer actually because um I'll, I'll probably get bored if I just keep doing one thing and just like not learning other things so um so after um after Halo, and then that's how I um, I basically just like went to Soccer Punch after right after I like, graduated from our center. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, and that's what getting really good at fundamentals gets you. And you can be a generalist, you can make anything you want, and you get tired for it. And when you get out of our center, like when you do your after your education, you can break into the industry right away. If you do like get well at your foundation and fundamentals of art properly, and it always shows when an, in an art in artist's work when it, who actually has put it put the time and in like learning the principles of design and actually practicing in it, you know the whole thing together. And I think you're one of those cases as well. 
and uh, that you could manage to pull, pull that off. And um, yeah, I'll say um, so. Being a like the tricky thing about being a generalist, I guess it's like you have to juggle so many things. Basically, you know, so if you don't use Blender for maybe like two weeks, you forget about the hotkeys, right? And then if you don't like keep sketching, you know, um, like character drawing, you maybe for like you get rusty, right? So I guess the thing about like doing every like being good at everything is like you have to constantly revisit everything. You have to like just not just pay attention to like just one thing, maybe just like how to design costume, how to, you know, just like um, design, char- draw char- cool character. You also have to pay, like pay attention to lighting, composition, black and white, like value, like, you know, learn cinematography, like everything. So you're definitely going to be spending more time if you want to, you know, make both of your portfolio like as good at like maybe on the same level so i guess that's like the trickier thing you have to be um you have to keep in mind not just oh i want to be a journalist i just do a little bit of everything and then you have to like basically basically put in like the same amount of all, like effort to make sure like they're both like equally good equally good or there's one part you're like extremely good but other part is not like dragging you down right it's not like um i guess it's like way lower quality but they have to be kind of on the same level so that's i guess that's like trickier part all right and um all right now now's an interesting question which i think would be really Good to hear now. It's kind of like, you know, both working on environments or characters, but let's say even like assets in the process, basically any project, all right? Do you have separate pipelines for each or do you have like a general pipeline that you have for every time you want to work on a piece? And also tell us how does your design process usually go anytime you want to work on any of the piece, you know? Sure. What steps do you take? What What does the structure of your pipeline look like? You know, the whole thing. Cool. Um, I guess like the first... The first part is they're pretty similar. So, because I'm pretty heavy on research, I'm pretty heavy on like gathering reference, you know, searching for inspiration. So, um, no matter what I do um, prior to starting the actual work, I'll just like, you know, immerse myself into, you know, just like reference or, um, you know, oil painting you know, any, or just music, I'll just, like, put myself into, like, the, I guess, creative mindset. I think that's, um, that's a big part for me, because I can't just, like, roll out of bed and just, like, jump straight into your work. I think I'll need some sort of, like, warm-up. It's just, for me, it's kind of like, um, if you go to a gym, right, and you're just, like, go straight to, like, 500-pound, like, squat, you're, probably gonna strain yourself so but if you do some warm-up it's gonna make your performance maybe better smoother so i i think that's like in the same for me um in terms of like doing art so i'll I'll, i guess i'll at least like save uh i guess like 10 15 minutes prior to um doing art i'll like maybe just read some really interesting books about you know texture about um, like pattern in nature, how they form, and uh, or just read about some like architecture design book. Just just give me like some, just inject me with uh, you know super artsy um, stuff, and then after that, I um, I'll start I'll start in an actual process. You know, just like sketching, um, figuring out just like what elements I can I can extract. Um, if it's character, um, I'll do even more research because if it's, uh, if it, if it, if it, the character is, you know, it's from like some, his, has like some historical background, I'll, I'll just like spend a lot of time on their historical research just to make sure actually, at least there's some accurate, like historical accuracy because I don't want to screw any of those parts. Um, and then... I'll also 
Um, so I'm talking about like my personal work. Um, the actual work is a little bit different, but um, it's a similar. Um, so for character, I'll just like pull um, like some different categories of reference. So first one, maybe just like pure texture, you know, texture of uh, plants, texture of like rocks, texture of like maybe just like um, like sea creature or anything. That's that's like um, part of my inspiration and just like a like, color palette. That's for later after I get the, the basic design done. But I'll, I could also be inspired by the color right up, like right off the bat. I could be inspired by like the, the feeling that the, the color is like giving me or just things like that. And the third category is um, I'll pull just like really interesting reference with uh, really cool shapes. For example, like if I found, okay, this like weird like African plant has like a super cool like shapes, I'll, I'll, I'll just like put it like right next to my, you know, canvas. Just, just get, just to provide something that I can work, you know, work off of, not just like completely blank. I'll just like, I tend to like work with a ton of, you know, visual cues. So um, whenever I get stuck or anything, I'll just, just look at like the side of my canvas and just like search for, you know, those inspiration. Um, that's, I guess that's my, um, that's my process for a character and for, for um, environment. It's pretty much the same, but um, I guess my my research, like my fo- my main focus of research, would be on lighting. So, what type of light, like lighting, like situation you want to do, um, like what type of like mood, like emotion I want to convey to an audience. That's my main, like pretty like big part of my focus for. Um, for environment which is lighting composition like what exactly i want to say in that in that scene do i want to just like highlight that like like the loneliness of the scene or like the epicness of the scene so that's directly gonna decide like which type of um i guess like composition is gonna work in your favor and then after uh, after all those, like, after I had, like, an idea, I just, like, sketch out on paper and then just bring that to, like, Blender to get um, basic, like, blackout down or in 3D code. So, and then I'll take, like, those rough models from 3D code to Blender and just, like, keep working on it. And um, I'll, I'll pretty much get, like, I'll say, like, seven, like, a good 60 or 70% down in, in Blender. Basically, just like lighting information, you know, the, the correct, like the value and the composition. And then after that, I'll bring that into Photoshop, just like doing a final touch up, just like adding texture, you know, correct some color, like just like, just like punch out, like the highlight more. So that's pretty much my process for um, environment. All right. And just I was wondering, like, you know, is 3D code free to use or... Um, there's a free trial for like I guess 30 days but um so right now um they just um they just released 2022 um you can do subscription and also you can just like do um like one time buyout so that's pretty much similar to zbrush all right and i was wondering why not do everything all the 3d things in blender from the get-go like is there a particular advantage of like using 3d code or blender i was just curious yeah, so um, I think, th- okay, so I gave, like, th- ZBrush, like, three shots before because uh, I really wanted to get into ZBrush, but I think that's just not the most intuitive software for me. Um, but right after I tried, like, 3D code, I was like, wow, that's exactly feel like working in Photoshop. That's super intuitive, you know, nothing crazy. Basically, um, it's just, like, kind of, like, 2D, like, you know, those brushes in Photoshop, but it's just, like, 3D in, like, uh, 3D code. You can just, like, like very quickly get, like, organic sculpture or just, like, cut, you know, like a like a, a shape out of, you know, like the model. So, and especially I uh, I think my favorite tool in uh, 3D code is, like, this stencil. I think it's called, uh, I'm so bad with names, but it's they have, like, a kind of, like, a stamp tool which you can just like 
like customize your shapes. Basically, it just can super quickly turn into any shape you want. And、um, also, I really enjoy their、um, so many like other features, like two D paint. Two D paint is exactly like painting in Photoshop, but it's like three D. So everything just feel pretty, I guess, pretty lightweight, pretty intuitive, and you can just like watch, I guess, like two or three like tutorials from maybe just like Atom, from Jama, and you can just like super quickly grasp like all the features. So I think that's、um, pretty cool thing. Also,、um, I was like before I prior prior to I learn、um, what's the name we just talk about Blender. No, like no texture software, substance. Maker. You got it. So prior to I learned learned that I was directly just like texture everything in three D code. So it's just it's just like a one stop shop. You can model, you know, texture. It basically just like you know, and you can even do like UV in like um three D code. So that's pretty handy. And their 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 texture painting is even easier than probably just like. Uh, is way easier than、uh, I guess you paint in other software. So that's just like save a lot of time, like save a lot of you know time that you have to you have to like juggle you know different software. So I just get my texture and my rough blackout model down in three D code, and then just like send it send them directly over to Blender. Actually, they have a between so between three D code and Blender, they have an app link. So. Whenever you paint, you can just directly update that in Blender, so that's super handy. Wow, I did not know that. Yeah,、oh, that's but, kind of, that's pretty not, impressive. Yeah, not a a lot of people are using three、um, D code, so that's the only downside is if you get stuck. So if there's, there's some、no、weird box, I know. So there's a, if there's some weird box going on, you have no one to you know to go to because like. The the I guess like the three D code forum is basically like a kind of like a graveyard. Maybe there's <laughs> like can... some this dead Discord server with forty members on it. Yeah, probably. Yeah,、there. probably. I, I no, need to find that out. To anyone who wants to use three D code, but you know, it's just making jokes here. Yeah, I just hope like the community is like you know as as a big of community as you know Blender because basically if you get any problem, you can just like go to you know Google, right? You can fi- find out an answer like immediately, basically. But three D code, you really have to like problem solve by yourself. Sometimes you you just feel, oh man, it's kind of lonely. I wish more people use that. So just as an only thing. So, but other than that, I freaking love three D code. I'm still using it. All right, awesome. I'll actually check it out. You know, after the podcast, because I'm, yeah, I'm kind of intrigued. Yeah, let me know.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely.、Um, Yeah, I'm not one of those people that are like dead set on a certain software. I just love to learn, experience everything to a certain bit to see how it is. Right. And、uh, yeah, but of course, my main tool is Blender. But yeah, I love. I like to try new stuff as yeah, well. Yeah, Blender is really awesome. You can basically get every get everything done、yeah. in Blender right now. If you're really good at it, even like with even the basic vanilla stuff without add-ons, there are people who do like. Crazy things on it.、Like、Those add-ons are so freaking with, awesome. I'm I'm even saying without the add-ons, with just the vanilla blender, people、mm. are like doing magic with it. I know. Damn, I should I should just get back to blender. My blender has been like collecting dust since last year. <laughs> I'm like I already forgot like all the hotkeys. Like I I probably co- couldn't even like rotate the camera right now. Oh really? That much? <laughs> just, just kidding. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. But.、Uh... Yeah, yeah probably the... basically like that.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Good luck. And <laughs> well, here's another interesting question, which is, what was the first art job paycheck you ever got? What was it for, and how did you feel at the time when you got it? <laughs> basically, what this question means, like you know, when what was the first salary or paycheck you got out of art, and the story behind it. Oh, okay.、Um, I think that was back in China, my first internship,、um, which is like that mobile tech company game,、uh, like mobile, mobile, mobile game company.、Um, I think I was doing still three D. Like I was working like on、um, like a model in Maya. That was that wasn't the best internship experience, but it definitely taught me, like introduced me with three D. Because prior to that, I had zero knowledge about three D or anything. And、um, I'll say I was pretty, 
pretty good at um, 3ds Max because that's their that was their go to software back then, and then they basically introduced me to like the whole package of like 3D. You know, from you're basically like a one like one man's band. You do rigging. You do like like UV unwrapping. You do like uh, texturing. You know, animation. You know, you do like basically from from modeling, rigging to you know skin, everything. So we went through like the whole process of just like turn a uh, basic, you know, um, a concept into like the final product. So I guess um, that's like a really uh, beneficial experience for me because if it wasn't if they didn't force me to learn three D, I, I was probably not gonna learn that at all probably until like much later so i'll say that's pretty good because you get paid f- for learning 3d so that's pretty sweet all right and well there's like a couple of questions i want to ask you you know because there was this is the section of the podcast which i like to call it general art chat we we just basically you know talk about random stuff and just anything in between and and I wish the first forty minutes we actually talk on the call would be I part know. of that as well. But yeah, <laughs> maybe another cool. time we record something else as well. Yeah. But the first thing I want to ask you is like you know when I checked your art session, like a couple of things that's really caught my eye was like you know your like the resurgence post and the mirage post. Like basically the things from resurgence ones, your works I really love them. Like they ro- they look really cool. Thank like, you. I, I, my measurement stick for this art style is that wood. 14 year old Ramtin would stick that on the wall of his room and he would trust me and because if because I've, i have like photos of like my room when i was a kid or a teenager like i always had posters plastered of everything i love like you know I've, i was i love like decorating my room with things you know i'm one of those mm-hmm. people but of course i live in a rental home i can't stick anything to wall because my landlord will take my deposit for it so yeah i'm just getting off track but the point is yes your yeah, art is like pretty good i really like especially oh, those oh thank ones. you i'm so flattered and um yeah tell us the story of like you know the projects of course if you can i mean because i think you said oh, that. totally that's my personal project i can like oh, talk nice. like 10 hours about it hell yeah let's talk about <laughs> it so is the yeah. resurgence and mirage in the same universe and ip or they're separate ones Okay, so uh, Mirage is actually a project um, I've done in Jama's mentorship. So Jama Jurabaev is one of my favorite artists. And basically, it just opened opened my eye to, you know, like the powerful Blender, you know, Psycho's world. Um, uh, Also, like, he taught us a a ton of, like, super useful um, knowledge about, like, cinematography, you know, like, film industry, for example, like, the... Um, like which lens you use to um, convey certain, you know, feeling or things like that, you know, like t- different type of shots, different type of camera lenses, um, wide lens, like um, like long lens, uh, things like that. Those are a super powerful tool for you to utilize in your um, environment design. And I had zero knowledge about all of those before um, taking JAMA's mentorship. Um and I've learned a ton of tricks about, you know, like lighting, you know, and just like um, 3D co, you know, a ton of like lighting tricks and stuff. Um, so, yeah, uh, the whole thing was done in JAMA's mentorship. And that was really intense. I think it was only a five week um, mentorship. So basically you um, you have to figure out your whole story, like your original story from scratch in the first week. And then you get approved by JAMA. After that, you jump straight into um, character design. Wait, I think character design come later, but I think in the second way it was um, basically just like, oh, okay, so figure out like the composition, like which camera lenses you want to use for the specific shot and just like do like a storyboard for your whole story. Basically just like turn your um, story into like a, a black and white storyboard. And that's really interesting because that's basically pretty much my first time doing um, a storyboarding. And then, um, so after that week, JAMA would pick, um, I guess, like, like from like five to like 10 shots or how many shots you want to do. Um, so after that, uh, we jumped straight into software, I think, week three or something like that. Basically, you model everything from scratch. 
not really from scratch. You can also like you you know keep ash, but you have to just get like you know, your each of your scene just like blocked out in three D. And then I think fourth final week is basically just render. You know, if your project is more character heavy, you spend more time on your characters. If it's like if you have like a like a super like um, complicated you know like like environment stuff, you may you might want to spend more time on your um, I guess like model details or anything like you know like wires like gribbles and stuff. So yeah, basically five weeks, I've learned a ton of stuff, super just like completely eye-opening experience. And I think after that, my, just my environment, um, environment just like completely just like reached, I guess like, um, just leveled up so, like so quickly. Um, Cause everyone is like so just passionate to learn. And we just like help each other out. That was probably super intense, but super good, like memorable experience. I was just like talking to, you know, one of my mentorship friends and I was like, okay, let's do that again. We don't care. We're just like pull freaking five week, like all nighters. So, but yeah, anyway, that's a super, I was super worth it. Um, and oh, I did, by the way, I didn't finish all of those shots in five weeks. We just like you know had like a basic, like like idea, just just getting like basic shot down. But we did more paint over, um, more touch up after you know after um, the mentorship. So that took me like um, probably just like a couple more months, like working on that. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's not that's the first that's that's the project called Mirage. Um, and the, um, the second project, which is you just mentioned the resurgence, actually that's um, um, that's a formal language project I did um, under a John Park's mentorship. So John Park is definitely he's like a Jedi, Jedi master to me. He's like my sensei. So um, I learned so like so much things from him, not just like you know art, also, you know, he's totally like a role model, you know, um, in terms of, I guess, work ethic, time management, you know, everything. Like, um, also, I, he's, he's the person I learned, like, photo bash from. So prior to taking his mentorship, I had zero knowledge about photo, photo bashing. I was just like, you know, kind of like this purist. I only paint with my brush. I don't use any photo. But he just like completely changed my mind on that. I was like, he introduced me to like how fast you can like convey an idea by using photos. So I learned like ton of tricks from him. And so, yeah, this is a um, form language. I, I, I think he also introduced me to like the form language design, which is just, you know, taking, um, uh, I guess, like texture, shape from nature and just utilize them, transform that into your own design. That's a super powerful um, technique. Um, so yeah, also um, um, like those like black and white sketches I did, it's like also super um, helpful because um, I get to explore, you know, different silhouette, different um, just like super weird shapes that I wanted to explore prior to you really committed to one sketch. So like the whole process is really just like, really good in the learning experience so those two projects actually they're all done um during mentorship it's not just like you know just like not just like solo project or anything and it's kind of like a couple interesting points from you know the stuff you said like one of them was that i think it was episode 465 don't if i didn't mess it up wow was, you have a really I... good memory no, I don't trust me. Like, especially like lately, my memory has been getting super <laughs> foggy, which is weird. I feel and, you can um, even record. Okay, that's from episode like 125, and that's from like a, a 25 uh, minute, like uh, point like zero. It's it's <laughs> random. Like, like, listen, trust me, it's random. You know, like I don't I don't have like that good of memory. But like I think it was episode 46, if I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But uh, actually, let me quickly check. But all right, while I'm checking, I'm going to explain what I was going to say. Uh, I had a guest called Callie Way. I don't know if you know her as well. And yeah, she's, she's my a, friend. 
Oh, awesome. Oh, mm-hmm. another coincidence. Oh, I was close. I mean, she was, she was episode 47, not 46, but I was close enough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, she also, I think, was mentored by John Parker as well. That's the coincidence mm-hmm. I was talking about. And were you guys classmates, actually? Like, oh, and- totally. Yeah, you oh, guessed it yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so oh. we're we're kind of like the OG, um, like in the first, uh, I guess, first student, like first term of student. Uh, that's like um, did mentorship with like John Park. So that was back then. That was in house. So now everything is online. So we're like in the first, I guess, like first group of students that did like in house mentorship with John Park. So that was a really fun experience. Yeah, there's a couple of people I would love to one day have on the podcast as well. And one of them is John Parkes, actually, because like these couple of people that I'm mentioning is because I, you're episode 182, right? And uh, throughout, like so many people, when I ask them about their art inspirations, like they say a couple of names. And some of those names are John Park, Feng Zhu is one of the most common referred ones. Mm, yeah. And uh, there was a bunch of other people I kind of forgot, but these three like, Mullins, I've been mentioned a lot. Seed Mead. Craig Mullins. Yeah, yes. the, the default answer, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I guess you would say that, but... There are super yeah, The thing is, I don't... And of course, my format of podcast is not like just technical questions because we have a lot of podcasts like that already, a great podcast as well. But my podcast, mm-hmm. I wanted to be like a little bit more raw and genuine and, and get into the personality that. of people, I guess, mm-hmm. stories. Like, mm-hmm. that's, pers- that's person what I liked. And I was like, mm-hmm. if I like it, then other people will like it. And that's what yeah. I'm doing, you know? Mm-hmm. And because I, where, like, the closest I've seen someone do it was actually, like, you know, I think Ethan Becker does some interviews sometimes, but mm. he doesn't do podcasts, but he does some interviews with artists, and he actually does the thing that I enjoy. It's not just, it's, they actually go into the nitty-gritty details of their lives and journeys and, like, you know, fun stories mm-hmm. and stuff like that. That's what I'm into. Not necessarily what, software use of course those are great as well don't get me wrong i'm not making fun of anything but i want real talks you know like yeah talks. i think you have a perfect you know balance you know between like personal like work and like technical questions and you know, fun fun questions all right thanks so I much love, i, really I love the format that. it's really cool thanks so much yeah it's it's been refined for so long because trust me if you see my recent episodes even like the the way i presented as a host event today episode for example let's say 47 callaway that was a long time ago mm. um you probably would like oh my god that his old videos were not so great but you know i at least i can say i'm presentable at the very least right now you know as a host but yeah you're yeah, doing I mean, great i'll, I'll check that episode go. out actually oh awesome yeah yeah, because she's a really good friend of mine. Let me know how trash of a host I am, by the way. Like, oh, you know, come then. on. Come on. I'm sure it's going to be so awesome. Listen, in terms of production quality, I was so bad as well. I had no lights. I had Are you, like, light. holding, like, iPhone just, like, filming? No, 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 no. No, it was the same laptop, but I didn't have lights. My microphone was really bad. Like, it was just, uh, like, compared to now. But Hey, come yeah, on. We, we all yeah. have, you know, we are going to start things, start right? Summer. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, you know, even if you probably have this added sometimes to yourself when it comes to your own art, right? <sighs> Dude, okay. So I've been meaning to start my YouTube channel three years ago. And you right should. now I'm, I'm still procrastinating. Okay, I, I'm going to pick your brain on, you know, YouTube channel later. Sure. Sure. Okay, I'll, yeah, let's do that later. I, I don't, like, I haven't, like, I actually have my plans to do make additional content for youtube as well i have some like really good plans for videos but oh that yeah, is so awesome like like you as well because without doing anything like i genuinely it's not that much by the way i know some people will laugh but i basically done zero bare minimum effort for my youtube for podcasts it's like about 360 subscribers but real subscribers it's not like bull, like bullshit subscribers you know real people that actually watch and comment and yeah but yeah, but I know there's like some video titles that I have in mind that I know if I make them, like there was this episode with Laura Gallagher, which, you know, she was an amazing artist, by the way. And um, in a bit of it, we talked about Blender because she's recently transitioning into Blender from ZBrush. Mm-hmm. And I know cool. that's a good clickbait title in art scene, like in YouTube, you know for oh, sure. Oh, yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. But yeah, like, that's just one example. There's, I know if I actually get, I know if I should put the work, I will get results because I have enough material to work with, you know, from all this podcast. Man, yeah, clickbait title is no way to do it. Everyone's yeah. using clickbaity titles on YouTube That's these the way days. To go. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. We should do like a title like something weird happened to like Lola. Let's go check <laughs> that out. It's just kidding. Yeah, I know. 
<laughs> and um, is she quitting or not or something like you know something like that how did she sure. come over just like you know some random shit Yi Ting Zhang is getting cancelled for this find out more yeah we should do that of... mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> all right yeah probably yeah we'll plan it out after this episode actually yeah, yeah. but I'll definitely check out your earlier episode that sounds really interesting wow man it's been almost like hitting 200 that's crazy like how often do you do like episodes it's pretty random. I don't have any schedule. It's based off, like, you know... Like, here's the thing. Uh, um, this isn't actually extra information, but it's relevant to the answer that I'm going to give. I'm I'm bipolar type 2, and my energy levels, like, I, like I'm fully erupted, like, I, but I've gotten good at it to be, make it a balanced thing, mm. so it wouldn't be detrimental. But here's the thing. It's true. Like, when I get into my depressive phases, I just shut down like in terms of productivity and it sucks okay. you know especially for someone who wants to become an artist and just you know i mean of course i try my best to lumber, get through the creative blocks and all that eat during those times you know but when i mean my manic episode mm. oh my god oh my god like i there was times like i would record five episodes per day like you know or bang out wow. like wow yeah holy damn True story and um yeah, I, I like it's random, you know. Like sometimes, for example, you see me like record seven episodes in like a week. Sometimes you see me like upload an episode, one episode for a month. Mm. Yeah, but I mean, just whenever you have time, right? Now I'm actually relatively in my manic phase. So I'm just like, listen, let me actually show everyone something for everyone who's on the audio platforms listening. I'm sorry, but for anyone who's YouTube, this is actually the chart of episodes I've done and I should upload. And Ooh. yeah. Episode 170 we just got uploaded today. And yes, this episode is getting recorded on July 7th. And just actually giving, giving you yourself, I haven't told this, to all the, anyone who's listening and to you as well. Episode, this is 182, will be uploaded on August 16th. I don't know if you can see that actually, like in my bad handwriting. And yes. Wow, man, that's, that's so cool. Yeah, but that's, a, that's I, a cool plan. Yeah, thanks so much. But when I hit actually episode 200, I can actually rest a bit. You know? Just take a vacation, you know, lying on a beach. <laughs> yeah, Just I, like, don't like, I don't like heat celebrate. too much. I'll, yeah, I'll probably celebrate with, I don't know. Like how, well, how do I celebrate? God damn, my life's kind of depressing. Uh, yeah. Do you like a blender party? Oh, no. <laughs> Just kidding. Don't, 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 don't do that. I'll probably get, get by a rosé because... Yeah, I love rosé wine. It's the thing that makes me chill the most, honestly. I'll probably oh, get awesome. a rosé. Yeah, just chill in my house. Yeah, I, I like I like living inside my house. I don't get claustrophobic at all. <laughs> and yeah, how's how's like not like weather in Turkey right now? Because uh, when I when I travel there, it was like pretty. Um, that was like April, I think. Oh, that's so, actually a really good part to come to Turkey. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. April so right now it's like pretty sunny, warm. I guess. No, it's really warm, yeah. And oh, yeah. For example, for the podcast, I have to close a window so the no mm-hmm. outside voice comes out and my house gets actually warm. But when I mm. open the window, of course, the airflow starts and, you know, right now I feel a bit like moisture all over the place. Mm. And like everything is sticky and weird. And I don't know if you noticed during this whole 50 minutes I've been talking on the podcast, like I've been trying my best not to lean back to the, my pillow behind me. But of course, oh. my back my back is killing me. Of course, I need to fucking yeah. lay down. But yeah, oh like, man, you know it's moisture, it's hot, it's warm, it sucks. I don't know do who you... likes summer. Who okay, likes so summer? Actually, you... I'm actually curious. Who likes summer over winter? Oh well, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean summer's <laughs> nice. Now, yeah. I'm a huge sucker for summer, but um, not in I, I guess not in LA because LA is like freaking Mad Max. Yeah, you I know? heard. Mm-hmm. That yeah, so sense. now I moved to Seattle. Seattle is like, oh my god, it's like a for It's kind of like a, you know, in the forest in Princess Mononoke. Oh, it's that's like beautiful. so like everything is so green, you know, like vegetation, like just literally just like a Princess Mononoke forest. And actually, no, the temperature has been around just like sixty degree, which is uh, like fifteen degrees Celsius. Yeah, in july that's... can you believe that like 15 like 18 degree wow yeah that's that's amazing so enjoy the weather i'm glad but not a winter though not winter the winter oh, yeah. is freaking I, like i like winter it's like honestly like you know you in like winter you... yeah because you can get cozy inside play video games there's storm outside 
Yeah, I and guess. Yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess that's um that's an awesome part about winter. About you can... You're always sweating. It's always hot. And you can't get out. You can't use public transport. You just have to stay home and sit under your fan and record podcasts. <laughs> you know? Do do you like is your AC like always on during summer? Always. Always? Okay. Always. But here's the interesting thing. At midnight the weather gets a bit chilly, so I can turn sometimes mm-hmm. turn off there before I go to hit the actually knock out, get knocked out and go to sleep. Mm. I turn it off of course. Mm, and, okay. uh, but most times it's, yes it's on yeah i, I mean can't... i don't even have an ac here wow because most of the household they don't have an ac in you know washington here wow that's so awesome honestly you work, <laughs> you, know, you work remotely from home you live in yeah Seattle, working i've water. been working from home since last year yeah you're living the best life i mean honestly good for you i'm happy oh my god man the summer is like almost ending though Because we only get pretty much just two months of summer in Seattle. That's awesome. What? Okay, yeah, you just mentioned you're a freaking, like, huge summer fan. No. Oh, man, we should should switch. switch. I want to go back to Turkey again so bad. Yeah, actually, if you want, this is actually the best time. If you're you're legit or sadistic and love the heat, Mm -hmm. yes, actually, actually, (laughs) next month will be worse, actually. Like, just wait. Oh, so, like, in August, it'll be, like, crazy hot. Okay. Yeah, and especially oh my god, the public transport gets so annoying in summers. Like like bus, like buses. Metro buses, buses, trains. It's always so cramped. It's always so cramped. Oh, I oh haven't tried god. those last time. Damn. Oh, you say so you just took taxis or you were on a tour? We're on like freaking boring tourist bus, you know. Oh, then yeah. I was like in a tourist group, you know, the most boring way to travel, but you yeah. know, I guess. The best way to get scammed. Yeah. <laughs> You just because like they, take photo, you know, get off the bus and just you know, you know, sleep in a bus, basically. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah, I, I, I genuinely hate those type of traveling. But yeah, sometimes you have to, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, it depends on I guess like countries. Yeah. And yeah, by the way, if you wanted to come to Istanbul, let me know because there's a lot of scams going on with interest bus here. I mean, I think I told you before, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll definitely hit you up if I visit Turkey again. No, right, awesome. And by the way, to anyone who's listening, if you're ever coming to Istanbul in Turkey, um, just stay away from touristic areas. Don't buy anything. It doesn't have anything <laughs> special. That's a good advice. Like, honestly, gen- don't. And the second best advice is never, ever. Unless it's a life or death, I'm not kidding. Unless it's a life or death emergency, never use taxis. Never. Oh, really? Never. Why? Turks don't even use taxis here, you know? Mm-hmm. Because 95% of them, no, 98, I guess something around, it's definitely more than 95, are scammers. And it's super for expensive. For real? Damn. For real, for real. Holy, okay. Wow, that's good to know. It's been so rare that I've actually seen a good taxi driver with a conscious. Wow. Okay, so what if you guys want to get to like someplace really fast? You take a taxi. And you have and you must be pretty rich to do that. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. But Damn, uh, so so like, it's not controlled by like the government or anything, just yeah, like it, it 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 is, but some people a lot of taxi drivers get away with it. Wow, yeah, okay. And especially listen, if you're a tourist here it's like sharks that smell blood. By the way, like I'm not, I'm just talking about the people who work in the tourism industry. And I'm not saying that Turks are like that. Jesus, I have a lot of Turkish friends. They're amazing people. And um, yeah, that's a negative. For example, in Turkey, but the huge positive for me is that how everywhere, regardless of like every like what ideology, everyone is, is like super friendly with animals. It's like a super mm-hmm. animal centric community and just oh, culture. That's I sweet. really love that. Mm-hmm. Yes, like it, they care a lot about their animals. Like it, that's genuinely a really sweet thing in a cult, and that's I think they are number one in the world. I think honestly, in that they have a rich history of like taking care of animals and be friendly with animals. Like you would see, it, like it's not a strange sight to see, for example, like three like Turkish grandmas sitting together in the, like a alley, and they're one of them is just holding a big cat like a doll or something. Right. And just bring it, like, Actually, a baby. I remember I've seen like so many cats when I was in Turkey. Yeah, like cats are everywhere. Smoke. Yeah. Oh my god. And some of them are so smug they will actually expect you to just feed them. They will like, hey, give me, give me food. Like they're like much, <laughs> you know, sometimes. <laughs> Damn, I have to. Like visit Turkey again, like soon. 
All right. And actually, right now, because of the Turkish economy has like gone as basically crashing, burning. I think that's actually a good time for Americans to come because, I mean, compared to your money, you can actually get a good deal here in everything. Yeah, that's one of the perks of being born in a first-born country. So, yeah, I hope you enjoy that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, so let's actually go to the next topic, which is who are some of your favorite artists and designers that have inspired you the most? And, yes, this is one of the two cool... It's, this is one of those confusing questions that I mentioned before. And so, yeah. Surprise question, yeah. huh? Um, like, favorite artist in terms of concept art or just like any Anything. medium? Okay. Okay. Um, I'll say in terms of, uh, so I just mentioned like John Park. He's definitely. He has, he's had a huge impact on my, you know, artistic taste and workflow, everything. So John Park and also Kevin Chen, I have to mention Kevin Chen because he literally just like changed my character design game. Um, so um, he introduced me with uh, so many just like eye opening, I guess, like a knowledge about character design, costume design. So the character design is not is not just about, you know, designing like equally badass characters, which is what I did before taking his class. So, but after that, he pointed out that my character was lacking personality. I was like, what the heck is personality, right? Because I thought I just do badass characters, make make everything like equally badass. But so after just like took his class, I learned like so, so much more about just like intricacies about like, you know, how do you give personality to each character and how even like like how to like i guess like guide audience like like eye towards like the focal point you want audience to focus for example you can use like car line even like costumes car line to to guide like audience view or color could be like a powerful tool tool you know to like reinforce the, the focal point and uh, color texture everything could be like powerful too i never knew that before so that definitely helped me like level up my my character design so much so shout out to kevin chen and he's teaching at um concept Art, um academy in pasadena i guess I think, yeah, it's in Pasadena. And go check his class out. It's super, like, mind-blowingly awesome. And uh, also another artist that has had a huge impact on my, um, I guess, my my design um, was Saifo Haki. He's, he was teaching at Brainstorm, but I'm not sure if he's still doing, um, like, class with Brainstorm. Maybe like mentorship, but um, I took his form language design. It's a it's a it's a it's a class before, and uh, holy crap! So it's completely mind blowing. So like so like so much like juicy information about you know how do you extract form, extract color, pattern, everything, and to utilize them to um, make your design like more um, believable, more like. Just more like just like grounded in rea- reality and type of thing. So that's another game changer class for me. Um, let me think about also Jama. I just mentioned Jama. So he's kind of like this like 3D wizard, just like introduced me with uh, so many like awesome tools, you know, tricks, add ons. Um, if it wasn't for Jama, I probably I'm, I'm not using like 3D code for so huge shout out to Jama. Um, so other than that, um, I mean, I, of course, like Sid Mead, Craig Mullins, they're like super legendary. I looked, I looked at their work a lot when I was, you know, just getting into the industry. And, but I guess right now I look, um, if it's for, you know, just inspiration, I look, I'm looking less and less just, you know, um, I guess like, our, especially our station because sometimes I feel like I'm just like so uninspired on our station so so these days I just tend to look outside of concept art I look inspiration just like basically just like from like cross media for example like sculptors costume designers architects um 
also like you know like musician so um there's a costume designer um she i really looked up to um her name is uh, oh my god i'm so bad with names um let's see Okay, her name is um uh, Aiko Ish- Ishioka. So she worked on the the film The Fall and The Cell. So basically, her costume design are so like whimsical, and just like full of like imagination. She's just like always just like breaking the rule. So I just really I really appreciate her artistic taste and the just like the. Like always, just like will, willing to try something new and just like break the rule. So um, she's like definitely one of my favorites artists so far. And another one is um, is a is a sculptor and an architect. His name is uh, David David U. Um, let's see, David Umemoto. So he does like those super. I, I at least I've never seen before. Just like super um like rad sculptures like designed with like geo so like geometric just kind of like a super feel like alien type of sculpture but it's all hard surface and um what i really like about his sculpture is he even just like um not just sculpture he also utilized like how he utilized the lighting in his favor to just really enhance the emotion he want to convey in his sculpture and also he how, how he applies like texture like on his sculptures everything so that's that's how i um i guess i had like new understanding about lighting texture like how well it's like brand new way to use them um i guess another um there's a, also a british painter um I guess in around the forties, his name is um, um, Yuan Wuklo. Um, so his his painting is like he mainly does um, like the figure painting, but his work is like the perfect example of when to punch, when to recede, and heavy on awesomeness. So he doesn't render everything like equally, like in terms of de- detail level. He will actually leave a lot of his like character faces like just untouched, and then just like focus on one part of the the body part that he wanted to focus on. So like audience just like just directly just like go straight towards you know like the focal point that he said. So I think that's a really cool way to just like you know to just guide your idea like. To guide your audience eye towards something you want them to to pay attention to, and uh, just like you know, just like um, like also like I really like the pinterly feeling. I also I always just like put his work right next to you know any design I do, just help me to loosen up a little bit because my render sometimes just like get you know so tight at the end. So I just really need like someone just to pull me back a little bit, just to take a break. Um, yeah, I guess, um, there, I have, I I mean, I have like a long list of like favorite artists, but I think there are three that's like off top of my head. All right. And right. So the question wasn't so bad after all, you know, we were kind of stressed about, you know, Oh, so that was the... The spontaneous so question. One of them is that, yeah. Oh, just, okay. Just we still have wait. more. All right. Okay. All right. Actually, here's the thing. Before we move on to the next question, usually in the general art chat section of the podcast, I ask, you know, I tell you the questions that people, you know, send in. And uh, one of, you know, we just have one question sent in by Charlotte Luna. She asks, what inspires your work the most? Which I think kind of answered it during the... Like inspiration in terms of... Yeah, just in your button spreads your works basically. Yeah, basically just you know like books, um, films, film especially films before two thousand, uh, and I have a huge, uh, huge passion for indie films because they, I really like art house films, and you know books. For example, I just bought this, this baby, it's super cool. Um, it's called Patterns in Nature, which is basically talk about like how those like super like weird pattern form, what's their functionality, why they form the way they form. So 
learned so much, like so many new things from them. And also, I also read like a lot of like, um, like the making of films, just like how film is is made type of book. So I really like to read like those, especially like director's vision, like about this film also like cinematographies you know take on lighting and stuff so those are super fun to read also i watch a ton of like like youtube videos about you know weird creatures how they um how they pray how they hunt and um also found facts about their you know like biological like bodily functions so i just watched like there's a super creepy super creepy but inspirational video about um parasitoid wasps so that freaking badass they lay eggs inside of caterpillars and basically just like after they lay eggs inside those you know caterpillars they just basically mind control them and those caterpillars will lay well so those like eggs they will hatch inside of their like caterpillar's body that's like the most disturbing thing like I've ever seen. So those like eggs. Were I can't like, get the mental image out of my head. I'll I'll send you the link. Actually, no, I'll, no, don't, don't, don't. I don't, can't please. be the only one that got traumatized by that. No, but... no, 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 no. Please, please. <laughs> so, but it's super, it's super awesome inspiration. If you want to do some, you know, alien freaking effed up design, that's super cool. So basically, and the, the most interesting about like the the power, oh my god, power parasitoid wasp is a so after um those eggs are hatched uh or hatched um actually like those caterpillar will like guard like the wasp's eggs and will just like just basically eat like he's like their um i guess their maternal instinct will just eat, just will be like triggered so that's really interesting Basically, they just turn to slave for, you know, as like a babysitter for wasps. So that's just like so like mind blowing. And also I uh, watched another video about um, about like a like a molting of a praying mantis. So basically they just when they molt, they just like just like hang upside down and just like just completely just like, you know, just like um, I guess like a. Like, like born from like their, you know, their, their, their skin just in like upside down way. That's like so epic. So if anyone like interested in those like weird stuff, just, oh man, I, I should just share like a whole list about like freaking like weird, creepy, low key, creepy videos about, you know, all those like creatures. But yeah, so um, watching those cre- like YouTube video is my jam. Um, and also... I also watch like a ton of like a uh, um, black and white like old Japanese films because their compositions are so awesome. I'm still like studying their compositions um, each week. So yeah, that's how I basically my main inspiration source. All right, and there was another like image I remember from a parasitic like you know organism, which was like it was kind of like a parasite that would borrow itself into the mouth of a fish and oh, it would no, cut oh the tongue gosh. out completely and it just replaces itself with the tongue so whatever the fish what? eats it eats that's so crazy so they cut their tongues out they cut the tongues of the fish out and they r- put themselves in the place of the tongue <laughs> so they eat everything the fish wow. eats. That's, that's really creative joke. actually right I mean, you get like the that's best so inspiration up, from nature. <laughs> why can't it just evolve into something that is like algae? Like, why do you have to do it, be weird like that? Like, I mean, what if you you got like task of like designing like alien creature with you I know, know disturbing? I'm just joking, of course, yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, those are the best. I can't actually. I can watch those like the most disturbing video for like ten hours straight. I'm just like, oh, I'm s- such a sucker for those videos. Anyway. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not. I gotta send you a link later. No, please, no, 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 no. no, (laughs) It's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's just like slightly disturbing, but no, in a tolerable way. I feel like a baby that's that they want to feed it the food, but just keeps refusing. I'm like that. You want to give me the link? (laughs) I'm like, no, please, I don't want it. (laughs) Yeah, it feels like that, but yeah, they're awesome. 
Yeah. Opinions differ though, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's so you don't video. you don't watch like those like pretty freaking no. gross no why creature no? but they're so rad though you never like no they're refuse... disgusting i don't want to be near them i want to be inside my house what are you talking about <laughs> yeah not definitely not near them but if it's you know be behind the screen i can i can totally watch them no like i have a deep fear of like you know ocean in general Oh, I and, know. That's like a what? What's the word? They have a I word. Think it's and, thalassophobia. T- t- I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have. I think and, I have that too. Yeah, another one of my fears is fear of insects in general. Not all insects, but most Hi-fi. insects. Hi, bye. I oh, freaking yeah. hate insects. As long as they're not nearing me, I'm okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, and, uh, never mind. Let's just change the. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I used right. to live in LA, right? And that's like a house. And there is some pretty gross thing was like going on when I was living there. Okay, I'm not gonna talk about that's for another episode. But yep. yeah, sure. <laughs> insects are the worst. Yeah, especially in hot places. I know LA is like a freaking hot for you know, like it's, it's like a breeding mm. ground for like weird, the most weird is like yeah. Interesting. I, I guess. And I, I also discovered some. I discovered some like never seen before insects in my house yeah actually the same oh yeah in in your place right now not right now i mean i've disinfected and just cleaned everything like like obsessively so i rarely like every once in a month i see like a you know like new design no not new design actually listen i i'm fine with the spiders that's i'm fine with the spiders and scorpions that's a spider too the spiders are chill, honestly. They're, yeah, they're they're good dudes. Like I opened up my bed under my bed, I wanted to get some pillows, and I saw this this size giant. like I don't know how to, like not giant, like a little bit like a smaller than my palm, but it was relatively big. Come on, dude, that's a really giant yeah. one. No, it's not. It wasn't that. It's like you know, this... uh, just like their legs, right? They're, they got like the daddy legs long legs. Expanded? Yeah, no, it wasn't oh, no. that. It wasn't... I, I can't, I can't do those. No, it had a nice design and spike. I actually took it put it in the case and just took some pictures for reference exactly from its like sack you touch them you can you can just like you you caught them bare hand they're better than cockroaches like honestly like those oh come on how 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 dare you compare like spiders with cockroach i'm just kidding i i can't do cockroaches because they're like freaking like nightmares exactly Mm -hmm. i i I feel like the most the most they have like no reason to exist. I'm sorry to cut you off again, but yeah, just want to say that. <laughs> yeah, so I feel like the most terrifying fact about them is if you f- find out one in your house, which means yeah. there's a freaking a million more in your house. It's like mm-hmm. lurking in a in a in a dark. Yeah, um yeah, probably just like me, anyone who's listening to this podcast are also getting paranoid and looking at ground. <laughs> and yeah. Wait, well, you live in an apartment, right? Yeah, lots. It's not first yeah. floor. No. Oh, huh, okay. Because the first floor is like the worst oh, in terms really? of like insects. Yeah, you get oh, more in that. first floor. Oh. But if you but like, no. you know, if you live higher, higher up. Yeah, of course, it, it's away from the sewer more. Yeah, I get it. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, let's change the subject. Actually, what do you think about <laughs> that? Yeah, how 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 we like end up here? <laughs> Yeah, it did, you only get to see this type of conversations on Korean podcasts. I don't, I didn't find any podcasts you could actually. Hey, find come on, like, we can do like a side, like side show, like if yeah. just, like we can talk about like freaking like disturbing creature insects. No, you know, I, I, that could can, be a really but... cool podcast actually. I, I, I like about different stuff, yes, but about like random disturbing like creatures. Or like count me out. Like I'm, just, I'm gonna be real with you. Yeah. Okay, I, 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 I can be the host then. <laughs> Yeah, I'm thanks. just kidding. <laughs> All right, so yeah, actually, there's an interesting question. Um, from your inspirations, yeah, we actually came to this, and now let's jump into the next question, which is: any advice and tips for a good portfolio and resume for artists who want to break into the industry? Like, basically, your whole package of advice and tips you have for someone who wants to break into the industry. Like in general, or for a count for like a character artist, three D artist, um, artist, in general. In general, uh, just uh, just be good. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you have to really like strat like strategize your um your portfolio, um, especially for like th- actually th- th- 
so many just like people like hiring people they they will make decision in probably just like one two seconds based on just based on your thumbnails that that's that's definitely that whole like some truth but um i'll say don't put anything that um you're you are not sure about if you you're not sure about don't even just bother to put them in your portfolio make sure like your pieces are like representation of your best ability just don't put anything you know just like even just like slightly below in quality even that's your only environment piece I'll, I'll say just like reconsider about that um just make sure you know really just put your best i guess just like three to maybe five pieces out there i think that's a a good number and um also um really just like diverse your your uh, subject matter for example if you um if you want to get hired as a concept artist uh, as character design like concept artist um make sure you do not only sci-fi but maybe just do a little bit of like you know just, um i guess like historical just just to show your range i think your range is really important um yeah, I guess um, I guess that's um, that's the thing that I that's off the top of my head. Also, our station is really awesome because I got most of my, you know, like job offers, literally on our station. And about our station, do you also need to like putting your works in the settings as the right category and hashtags? I mean, those should be really important as well, right? Because how? Oh, how you mean. It- how else would people find your work if you don't use it for right hashtags? I mean, is that the case in our session or am I wrong? Yeah, I'll say um, hash, you, you can definitely put, you know, like utilize those hashtags. But um, I think more important thing, I think it's. um. So there's a. Um, um, I guess you can just like manage your your profile because I so this is what I've heard from so many like senior artists or just like our leads, um they really don't like to see like you have to click your portfolio like multiple times. So let's say if you have like a like different categories, let's say like all like first cat like first photo is like all of your work. Second category is like oh work from twenty twenty two or work from, like environment character. They don't want to click into those. They just want to see you know everything just like presented in front of their in, in front of them. So maybe just like don't do just like put everything into like specific like folders because that's gonna make them click more times. Just um just just do like the basic you know the basic um um just just put everything just like they make sure they can immediately see your portfolio just don't make other just like make make the process more difficult for them yeah that that definitely but uh like here's the thing for example let's say you're working as an environment artist like in a science fiction genre all right and if you don't for example don't use the correct hashtags how else would you know clients find you like you know I, i'm just kind of curious because mm. um how would they find they would just like search all they just keep refreshing the r session homepage or just you know um i guess uh when you reach like certain follower base your work is gonna get promoted on top of the you know like the page like the, their website so i guess that's a way like i guess that's like pretty much the main way how people discover your work but if you don't have like a huge like follower base i guess definitely utilize hashtag for example like make the hashtag really just like closely uh, relate to your subject matter because to be honest i don't i i didn't pay attention to like hashtag on our station a lot because um basically like every time i post it will just like it'll just like um you know a lot of people just like immediate lotus because they will get just like i guess promoted but um i guess like hashtag is also uh i use a lot of hashtag on instagram though because instagram um i think sometimes hash hashtags are gonna yes. help you get more view like 
get more people seeing, right? But I, 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 I didn't do any study about that thing. It's, you know, Instagram has like a weird algorithm thing. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, yeah, I don't I don't have like, a ton of knowledge about like how to just like just get your work out there. I guess but the thing I'll say is uh, just like make sure really good quality and then good idea. Good quality, good idea and just keep working on it. You'll I, I believe you'll get there. You'll you'll get there. Yeah, actually another point you made was like make make a maximum of like one to two pieces on your art station. Which I've heard that before, actually. Mm -hmm. um, for juniors who want to break into the industry, they should have like one to two, p two pieces maximum. That's what two I Two pieces maximum? Yes. Uh, did you just say that as well? Uh, I think I mentioned like a three to five. Oh. Maybe maybe, yeah. maybe you can pull that off with two, yeah. but they have to be really, really just like fantastic. Okay, so... Yes, exactly. Two to three, I think you said. Yeah, so if you have like too little portfolio maybe they will mm -hmm. you know they want to check more maybe they'll give, give you art test just mm -hmm. to make sure you you hope you can like maintain that level of you know skill so if you have too little maybe it'll give you like an art test if they're really good too but i'll say a safer range is uh i think around like four or five i guess Five sounds good. Yeah, if you if you have like equally good five. Definitely, and the thing is because uh, actually Laura Gallagher, like episode one hundred sixty, she told me that, and she said one to two pieces maximum, but they should be superbly good. Yeah, like they should be your best work I agree. ever, mm -hmm. and you should work months on them. Like you should put your heart soul in them, because it will show the quality if you do all of those things. And um, the thing is, after she said that, I quickly, you know, after the podcast and call, I quickly deleted my art station. Because you I'm delete your art station. station? Yeah, listen, I'm, I'm going to explain why. Because I was, treating it, I was treating it like Instagram, right? Mm -hmm. And because I would see like portfolios of like yeah, some, some established artists and my, mm -hmm. and my naive, in my naivete, I was like, they're uploading everything they do, every random thing they do on our session. It's probably fine then, right? Mm -hmm. No, don't do that. Uh, <laughs> like, if you're a junior artist who who's not established and wants to get into the like the industries, you shouldn't do upload everything. You should, of course, put your best mm -hmm. works. But yeah, now that being said, now we I haven't covered one thing. Why did they delete my art session? Because if you're not a subscribed member on our session, you can't delete or hide your posts. Wait, so you mean if you're not pro? Remember? No, you can't. You can't hide. You can't delete. You can anything. What? Yeah. That's weird. No. Yeah, it's you can't it's even delete. No, you can't. Wait, delete. can you archive though? Because they have archive. No. no. So you no. can't do like unpublished. Nope. Huh? Really? Through what I've seen, I've tried. Wow, that's. Uh... <laughs> I made a new portfolio okay, with, say... ze with zero everything. I, of course, I followed and liked my previous like stats from mm -hmm. my previous art session but i it's zero things on it and i'm waiting for it like i'm gonna wor work on my skills and maybe hopefully in like in a few in a couple of months i can finally upload some stuff on it wow soon. okay wow i didn't know that so maybe our station is like hey guys beware if you post anything weird you can't undo it, it that it doesn't even say that it doesn't even say that they say oh it's only <laughs> available for like mm, like come on that's kind of that's so weird Man. Yeah. I mean, you can't you you can't even delete your stuff. What if you post something? Huh, that you that's don't that's like so it. weird. You can't Maybe they <laughs> Yeah, that's no way to do it. Yeah. No. Easy money. That's so weird. Like here's the thing. I think they're they're getting out of money and they need some sort of way to get some money. And I mean, it's the same with Discord. I mean, Discord. The, a lot of the free features of Discord is now only for paid members, like Nitro <laughs> members or something. If I'm not mistaken. Like the banners or like animated mm -hmm. profiles and a lot of that stuff. And these companies do all this stuff all the time. Wow, but I didn't yeah, know. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm going to be honest. Like, it's super weird to make like deleting or unarchiving your stuff as a paid feature. Hmm. That's kind of scummy, I think. Is, I, that, I is that like a trend for those? I, I don't know. I hope it won't be. That's, that's so freaking weird. Yeah. 
And all right. Um, another thing I want to ask you is, what are you working on right now that you can tell us about in terms of like personal projects and stuff? Ooh, I wish I could share like some like this bad thing, but ooh, I have not. I can say nothing for now. But stay tuned. Maybe we'll so, yeah. you know I'll release something really soon. Maybe. So yeah, so folks, you heard it. That's a good reason to go into the captions and find uh, her I- Instagram ID and f- follow her there or follow her on Twitter and stay tuned. Yes, that's the only way no. to find out. You wouldn't <laughs> find out if you don't follow. That's the warning. I should, I should definitely do more personal personal work though. <laughs> I've been, yeah. I just like, I just got lazy recently, but yeah. Oh, I accidentally muted myself for a second. Jesus. <laughs> I was like, I was like, damn, like, did I just like, my my just like no 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 not really like it my audio is like acne all again yeah (laughs) i was gonna say like i don't think you're being lazy it's something common that um we get burned out but because we're so hard on ourselves we don't see it that way we're just like oh we're lazy we're we're procrastinating no you're just burnt out um i guess not really burned out because uh when i was you know um in our center i do like literally just like daily paintings because i guess um you know like after you really just like start working you basically have to do this like problem solving for like eight hours per day so you know after like those intense hours you your brain just want to you know take a break sometimes i just don't want to just keep doing like art related stuff i know even though that's really hard that's something you probably should do from time to time but just like ooh, it's just really hard to you know just keep just doing like hard tasks Right, because your your brain only has like so much like like energy, you know, to for hard tasks. So I guess, but I'll definitely just get back to those dailies. Not probably not dailies, weeklies, I guess, really soon. So yeah, stay tuned. All right, and here's an interesting thing. Oh, by the way, just I remember something. Oh my god. Uh, in art center, was Ahmed Alduri was one of your instructors as well during the time you were in art center, or was he an instructor um, then? Not that I'm aware of. Oh, it was probably way before then. Yeah. Yeah, could be, because they rotate their um, instructors pretty, pretty fast, I guess. Oh. Some, so sometimes, like instructor, they only teach for maybe just one, two terms, and then they just leave. So, could, uh, could be, could be like. Could be in a case. Yeah, it was actually one of the chillest people who I've had on the podcast as well. And yeah, actually, I we we talked about this that I'm going, I'm planning to do like group discussion type of podcasts that they just hang out and just talk about random stuff, you know, just group, random group of artists, you know. And I, I want to bring him back as well on one of those episodes. I think it was fun. I had a lot of fun, like you know, chill time talking with him. It was a really cool dude. Awesome. And um, all right. The interesting question at hand, which I was going to ask, was <laughs> Here we what, go. Area, what area, beside the area you're working on right now, which is, of course, you know, art and, you know, and all of this stuff, would you be interested to explore and learn in the future? And, of course, I mean, a huge answer to that is already on the bio of your Instagram, which is like, you know, you're really into motorcycles and you have like a... Yes, my jam. Daytona right, 60, 675 yeah, that's rider. My, mm-hmm. That's the bike I'm riding. Awesome. You, you still right? I'm sorry? Are you still uh, using it in Seattle? Okay, that's the thing. Ever since I moved here, my bike has been collecting dust in my garage. I mean, the weather just got better recently. It yeah. was been like raining like freaking 24-7, so I had no yeah, what chance. What were your parents' reactions, by the way, when you, when you told them, hey, I, I got a bike, you know? They were like, oh, it's super chill. I was like, all right, all right, just don't die. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally, it's like, don't die. I mean, I mean I, they're, like, actually. they're like super chill. They're out. So I was raised free rate, like free range. Basically, they, they don't just free like range. hover. <laughs> they don't have, <laughs> they literally super chill. They don't hover over me like 24 seven. So they just like, let me do whatever the, f- the freak I want to do. So, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome to hear. They sound like cool people. <laughs> and, 
Yeah, so by the way, how did you get into like, you know, driving motorcycles and stuff? Like, you know, tell us about your journey on that. I asked you about concept. Like motorcycle journey? Plan. Okay, let's yeah. go. Um, so um, I guess um, I've always really interesting, you know, in something. Because, okay, so I think I freaking love like adrenaline rush. I freaking love, you know, like skydiving, like dirt biking, motorcycling, um, jet ski, you know, kickboxing and those things. Because those things can really just like switch my brain off to, you know, or just like switch to other mode instead of just like just focusing on, you know, like art. Because sometimes I need that. I need, I need that break completely from, you know, art just for a short period of time. And I freaking love like, like the feeling of like, you know, adrenaline rush. So um when i when i was in china i was like already like started uh, i started learning motorcycle um previous to probably previous to arsener so as soon as i got here like in uh, as soon as i moved to la i got my first bike like literally in the week so i i i got my license i got my um like everything like the, the dmv test down and i just like got my bike like in like the first week and then I literally just went motorcycle travel with my friend the second week. <laughs> so yeah, um yeah, I guess um like riding motorcycle it's just like um another thing that's somehow just like also um I guess like help you have a better understanding on how things are made and how things are I guess function. Cause um for example, um, if you if you want to do like a um, like a character like different. Okay, so if you want to do let's say soldiers, right? They have different types like melee, ranged, right? Or just like different type of like archer, right? How do you differentiate them without doing just completely redesign their armor? You have to find like subtleties. So. That's what I learned by just like like riding motorcycle because, you know, we have like different type of gears for like motorcycle. We have like dirt bike gears, like um, ADV, like road, like road bike, and also sorts of like different types. And you will notice, so for like road, like road motorcycle, like the helmet, for example, like, like in a helmet, designs are completely different, but their main focus is just like protect you from, you know, fatal crashes so for example um for like a road helmet it's like more just like sealed up it's it's mainly protect you from you know crash like on a freeway you know when you're on freeway you ride freaking like 90 100 miles per hour right and if you crash like when you're like riding like 100 miles per hour that's like no joke so like in a road helmet is mainly just like protect you from like fatal just like crashes so everything's like super sealed up and uh, everything's like so streamlined but for dirt bike helmet it's like m like the main focus is for like a ventilation it's get you like the best airflow so like in the design they have like a like a visor and then it's like to like defect um deflect like those like dirts you know debris and then it instead of have like a full like false like face like visor they have like a goggle so that's like prevent you from like fogging and just like you know because you will do like a, a lot of heavy breathing because like dirt bike is like a, a, a lot more sporty than just like road bike so just just by like studying those like different functionality of like helmets what they just mainly focus on you can just learn so much like design you know like the subtleties of about like different kinds of gear and you can totally apply apply that to just like your design so um i'll say like actually your hobby is is like is is a really good place for you to take inspiration from so just like be constantly be interesting be curious for uh you know those like details around you so i think that's interesting and i totally forgot what was the question the story of your art like not our journey actually this story of the journey of your like your motorcycle biking. okay yeah. I, okay i think i'm out on track then all right but yeah um so motorcycle is definitely my jam um all of my i guess my friend like non-artist friend in LA, they all ride a motorcycle so 
like you know just during weekend we just like hey do you want to go ride like Andrew Christ Highway uh, let's go so that's that's like the the best part of you know like after work activity I really miss that though you you can do you you can't really do that in in Seattle so that's I guess my motorcycle part is kind of missing here but I'll, I guess I'll figure that out I'll I'll do like maybe just like other what about, things what about cars do you also enjoy driving cars eh, okay i'm not a car person are you exactly thank you so much i'm exactly like you because here's the thing i hate driving cars especially in <sighs> not no, my thing listen i hate driving cars in cities i mm-hmm. wouldn't i wouldn't Ooh. mind driving cars in the countryside yeah, you. or outside mm-hmm. but like i don't dislike it it's it's fine it's normal but bikes for me is just different. traffic right yeah, especially bikes and bicycles and just mm-hmm. skate. I, I love anything that's involved that in, that it involves a board, a skateboard, mm-hmm. powerboard, um, waterboard, surfboard, mm. anything. I love board stuff. Basically, one of the one of my favorite things. And um, yeah, more and in terms of motorcycles, I love them all. But the things that I really enjoy, I want to try most one day is since I was a kid, I love yeah. this heavy Harley Davidson style more like motorbikes. You're a Harley guy. Damn, I didn't know that. No, because here's the thing. Because it's fun. Yeah, to go Harley is to freaking school. classic. No, because it gives you a sense of like control. Like I don't think not, not other like you know bikes do. You know, it mm-hmm. feels like heavy. It's like you're riding a tank, but it's not a tank. <laughs> it's, it, yeah. it's 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 yeah. so freaking heavy. Like what, like eight hundred pound or something like that. It's freaking heavy. Wow, and the but thing is like you it know, definitely got a style. It definitely got a style. It's so classic. Yeah, I, I love those classic stuff, and especially from cars. I love classic American cars as well. Oh, like, like from the like the forties, fifties. Like by the way, like... like driving. We've talked about fears. By the way, driving is one of my fears. By the way, as well, especially really? in cities. Really, for I, it, just like what, what, like what what what's not exactly in a fear? Because I super fearful that I might hit something, hit someone, or someone hits me. Mm. All of them combined, and mm. I'm the type of person that. I'm not really good at controlling my power. I see. So I either don't use it or when I use it, it's full force. I see. But and I think I feel one part about, like one good part about driving is, you know, when it's at night, right? Only you're, you're right. by yourself and it's raining outside. You put on some like super bomb playlist and just like completely in your own zone and just like driving. I, th- I feel that's yeah, pretty if, look, meditative. That if, yeah, that if you're... If the streets are quiet and there's barely yeah, any cars, yeah. As long as there's no traffic, I'm fine with that. Mm-hmm. But when it gets busy, <sighs> when it's, it's when it's like two, three other cars near me, I'm mm-hmm. like this shaking. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. Especially traffic. Like I would have the worst panic attacks ever. <laughs> I feel and you my, actually. And my driving instructor used to always yell at me because mm. I was. The whole time I was living through a nightmare. Listen, you know how people, when they have nightmares, they have nightmares after exams or tests. I still have those exams, by the way. They suck. But mm. one of my common nightmares is actually when I'm behind a car in a city. I'm not kidding. Oh, you're like behind a car? Yeah, I'm just driving a car. and. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's actually one of my main common nightmares, which is... I oh my see. God, actually... Yeah. And, is um... like traffic in Turkey really bad? Not just Turkey. Like, by the way, I I only mean living... Yeah, traffic is, by the way, just... Nightmare. <laughs> freaking... Nightmare. Mm-hmm. And not just that, like, I've been I've been also re- born and raised in Iran. You know, I'm mm-hmm. emerging from there. And yeah, the driving culture and just everything... Like, listen, I don't care where I am. I'm not going to drive in cities. Hmm. Unless I am desperately forced to. I see. Which, of course, along the way, like, I'm going to hit a bunch of stuff while I get to my destination. But, yeah, you get the point. How about, like, uh, can you guys, like, do lane splitting on a motorcycle? What, what is lane splitting? Uh, no, just that you you're just, you're just, like, ride in between cars. Oh, or you can you only take... That? I mean, I, I did that all the time back in L.A. Because lane splitting was legal in California. So, that's... Oh. A, that's like no huge benefit of riding a motorcycle. You can just be in a traffic. You don't have to. Yeah, but the thing is, bicycles, you feel complete control over what you're doing. With cars, you <laughs> don't. That's why but I like what if you? What if your commute is like 40 minutes away? Do you just like ride, if, just like bicycle for like two hours to get your a place? But that's a I really mean, good workout, though. That's a really good workout. But you're going to get to your jobs all sweaty. 
that's the problem. I know. No, that's that's another thing. Maybe in the winter yeah. though. It's still in the winter, you know, when you're working out and you just have warm clothes on, you're still gonna sweat. Yeah. Yes, everything is a pain. Yeah. But at least but, you can get your cardio out of the way the first thing in the morning. <laughs> yeah, and the thing is that in Istanbul, public transport is actually super good, so you don't have to worry about not having a car. That's the thing. Awesome. <laughs> but never use taxis again. Never oh, ever man. use under any I circumstances. I had no idea about the taxes. That's now really good do. to know. Now you do. Oh God, can you believe it? Or we reached the final question. Really? Oh wow! Yes. Okay. All right. Let me say what it is. And this is the tricky one of the tricky ones I mentioned. Let's right go. So be ready. Let's go. Um, this section of question is called final words. And all right, let me explain. Imagine in a limited amount of time that you might have, like let's say a few minutes, you had the window of opportunity and time to say anything from you, Yi Tingzheng, to anyone who might be listening to this podcast at any point of time in future. All right. So basically. From a human to another human being. And that another human being is, is anyone who's listening to this podcast at any point of time in future. A year, a decade, a century, who knows? And yeah, in that situation, what do you have to say? Okay, so just like leave a message for future like human beings. I see. Not, ju- wow, not, ju- not just our future you, just anyone. Anyone. Like, it's kind of like it your legacy you know if you could damn have the time to say. that sounds like freaking space odyssey type of shit exactly um <laughs> by the way really cool questions so far um so leave a like one message right it could be multiple as much as you want uh, wow i don't think i can do multiple right now uh i'll it's try my best creativity. think of one um, okay how about this um just just go outside more um just throw yourself into the nature because you know experience everything when you can because like um um, there's a a lot of like awesome places are kind of disappearing and you know just like quietly disappearing in the background so explore more um and just like see things with your own eyes uh, i remember there's a thing so i went to new york uh two months ago and uh i i wasn't like a museum person at all um so i just you know for those like famous super famous oil paintings we all seen on night right i was like okay th- those are pretty cool i i re- recognize all of them but when i just like when I was in that museum and I just like randomly bumped into Van of um, Van Gogh's um, painting. It's called Starry Night, right? We all have seen that before, but it's completely like it hits you different, like completely different when you see that in person. It's just like, holy crap. It's just like so powerful. It's, it's like something you had never experienced before. It's just like in a painting just suddenly became so I guess just like there's like so much more to just like just in like in photo because photo is just like flattering everything into two dimension, right? But when you standing in front of like a painting or just anything, you feel like so much more like dimension to it, so much more, you know, just like you can feel like the texture, like the. Like the co- like the subtle details in color, and just even like the you can feel like emotion. So um, definitely just like um, I'll say, try not to just like um, stay in your house. You know, like all the time. Try to just like go out, explore everything on your own, just to explore like different. You know, to to just just to look at like those details, um, in nature, maybe just like a pine, like the texture on a pine cone, you will notice they have like super interesting, like intricate pattern, and maybe just like, you know, just to discover some like, um, mushrooms by yourself, just 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 like try to um get an inspiration from the nature, cause nature's are, nature's awesome. They have like no 
most badass designs. So if you ever want to just like, if you feel like when you feel like uninspired or you want to just like, maybe just like get some like really cool inspiration, just go, just go explore in nature. You will find like the coolest shit ever. So I guess that's my, that's the thing I want to say. All right. That's actually a really cool message. And um, yeah, yeah but, by it, the way, like just as I have to kind of object, like there's, the new patch of the nature just came out like a week ago and it sucks. The weather is so hot. I can't understand. But the next patch is going to come out like in two months or so. so Wait, yeah, well, what was it? Be... Like the new patch? Yeah. They, they upgraded the software. Now everything is hot. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. The, new, yeah. the whole nature software. Yeah. The new patch, I don't like it. The mm. UI is just weird. Everything is so laggy. It's so warm. It's hot. I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> I, I liked it two patches ago. I hope they to return back to that soon. Yeah. Is that like a like a software or? or... Yeah, it's a software like joke <laughs> because because mm. like you know when you patch in the software, you know you you update it and yes, I mean of course now it's summer. You know that's a joke. Yeah, it kind of got lost. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> and all right, we reached the end of this episode. Thank you so much for coming by. It was awesome. Genuine, real Thanks for, for having me. me. My pleasure. And well, that wasn't in... that wasn't too tricky, actually. Oh. I thought you were gonna ask me like some freaking philosophy, you know, like like <laughs> super deep, just like just completely blanking question. But that's that's pretty. That was awesome. All right, glad to hear. And <laughs> where can people contact you if they had any questions? Um, uh, you can just like shoot me a DM on Instagram, or um, I don't use Email. Twitter that much. Yeah, so but um I'll be on Instagram um pretty constantly, so yeah. All right, good to know. And again, thanks so much for coming by and thank you to anyone who tuned in and listened. I by the way, for anyone who's watching on YouTube, I'm and if you're like wondering like I get that that most episodes I've been just like this. I look like a head that's been stuck on the ground, I know. But it's because I lit- I literally don't have a chair and I just have bunch of pillows like constructed like like a chair on my bed so because my back hurts and i have to come sometimes lay down it's not because i'm uninterested in the conversation it's because of that you know yeah that oh have you have you considered like a standing desk um you can just like just switch from like standing or sitting hmm. whenever yeah but i really can't upgrade my furniture where i am right mm, now i see yeah that's the problem but yeah i mean it's fine i did like 182 episodes like this so i'll do I finished the rest till two hundred wow. like that, I guess. Props to you, <laughs> uh, man. Yeah, thank you. That's thanks awesome. So much. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. It's been really fun pleasure, talking to honestly, you. Honestly, well, yeah, actually yeah. it's been I think it's been like two and a half hours in actually two and a half forty hours because <laughs> we didn't measure yeah. the forty minutes we did before we started, you know. <laughs> All right. And yeah, let's let's do this in in the future again. We should do like another just good. like freaking like weird topic, like just like not insects, not insects. Maybe just like cultural, yes. you know, just like languages or things like that. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that sounds memes. really cool. Yeah. Oh, that'd be so cool. Yeah. yeah. Sign me up. I'm in. All right. I'll right. sign you up. Awesome. Definitely. And yeah. that's about it. Take care, everyone. Leave that. Leave, oh, by the way, of course, you know, as usual, if there's any comments or suggestions or critiques, leave them down in the comments below or send me a DM. Nothing left, gets left on red. So that's about it, everyone. Take care. Stay safe in the next episode. Bye. Bye.